Hello everybody, my name is Letukwe Nama Letualo. I'm a medical doctor by profession. I'm currently doing my medical internship in Johannesburg. June will be six months in internship and as a doctor, and it's been quite a ride. So I'm doing this video to share something that I needed last year when I applied for internship. And I think something that will help you too. So we're here to talk about things to consider when applying for internship and community service. So if you're a final year medical student, if you know, student intern, if you are a final year in any of our allied health professions, if you're a speech, physio, OT, or dietitian, this also concerns you as well as if you are a nurse going to community service next year. This might help you as well. Making that decision that will influence probably the rest of your career. I needed this and I hope this helps you. Let's get into it. Okay, first thing, the ICSP website. It stands for Internship and Community Service Program. This is where you apply and you probably know about it and have received and should have received at least some form of communication already from um, the department via that website. So this is where you register, apply and get your posts approved for internship or community service. All right? So it's a four step process. The first step, which they've probably communicated, I know a lot of medical interns have said they received communication already, is the registration and verification step. There is clear instructions on the website um, that tells you how to do this. So once you've registered, they send, they send you an email to verify that you know it's actually you and that you're on the system and you'll be able to apply when the application process opens. So once you've registered, you've been verified. The second step is the post application. So that's very exciting. I was opened in July, which was a lot earlier than previous years. And hopefully this year it also opens a bit earlier. And we did receive our um, posts a little earlier than previous years as well. So I'm hoping that each year the system improves. So now that you are applying, it's going to open probably for a month and a bit. We have to pick your five options. Usually there's only one metro available to apply to and then another four options of um, whichever hospital that you want to go and work in next year. So after that, it's the post allocation. So they tell you whether you got your post or not. Sometimes, most times you get, if you're applying for internship, you get at least one of your top five. I got my first choice. And, um, if you are not in that first round, you're either second rounded, so the second round of posts are allocated and they tell you that you're in this place. And if you are not in the second round, you're third rounded. So it's quite a daunting process and people are sometimes anxious about it if they weren't in the first or second round. But essentially, all interns should have a job at the beginning of internship the following year, right? And then the, that's the first, second, third step. The fourth step, is where you get to um, swap as well as appeal. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of swapping that happens. I know in our year we opened a telegram group. People are like, I'm, I want this hospital for that hospital. I have this post, you want that post. So you will see it's going to be very chaotic, especially if you didn't get your choice or your first choice. So keep that in mind that you know what, you might not get it. So when you choose hospitals, get something you can always bargain with, you know, in case you get that. All right, so that's ICSP. If you have any questions about it, can be quite confusing, leave them down below and I'll try and do some research and find out for you. The second thing to consider, which is very important and something that I was very intentional about last year when I applied, academic versus non-academic hospital. So here's the, here's the trip, right? You've been in medical school for six, seven years plus and now you are going to be a medical intern in training. Now you're a doctor. And you're going into the working environment, you're past all the exams and all the stress and all, you know, just the turmoil of medical school. So you have to decide, do I wanna go back into a similar setting that I've been in for the past couple of years, or do I want something a bit more chilled? Whereas for me, I really just wanted to relax a bit. I wanted to just catch my breath. Med school was a lot, physically, emotionally, mentally, and I just needed a break. And I went for a hospital that wasn't as demanding as most tertiary institutions and academic hospitals. So that's something to consider. But also to bear in mind that 
if you're in either of these hospitals, there's pros and cons with those, right? So if you're in a big tertiary hospital, which is usually academic, uh, a lot of interns complain that they paper pushes. So they don't get to do a lot of procedures, see a lot of the interesting patients because they're running the admin of the whole department. So you're booking the scans, you're doing the discharge summaries, you are the one doing consultations, and you never really get to do stuff that's actually, you know, uh, procedure based. And the thing with the non-academic hospitals is that sometimes you lack supervision that you might need. You might be on call with a senior and you call that senior and they know where to be found, which you know a lot of people have experienced that, which can be quite daunting when you have an acute case and it's an emergency and you're not quite sure what to do given that you're a final year med medical student just becoming a doctor. There's a lot of learning that we still need to do and that we are currently doing in internship. So you need to keep that in mind, all right? And just the learning, so where am I actually going to be able to learn? And if also specializing is something that you're hoping for in the future, that's also something to consider. Hurry, um, do I want to be in an academic institution where I can make connections or do I want to rest a bit, be able to do procedures, be in a non-academic environment and then be able to then apply back into these academic institutions once I'm ready to start my registrarship in whichever department that I want to do. Okay. Number three, which city or province do you want to go to? So this is also another big one, right? If you are going to a province or a city that's different from the one you're currently studying in, it's a big move. If you have studied away from home for all the six plus minus years, then that's also something to consider. Do you want to go back home or do you want to go to another province, you know, that you haven't been to? So think about that when you make this decision, right? Because whichever city you're in, you need to be aware of what the social and local surroundings are, right? What, what's available in them? What can I do? Is there social life? I'm still young and I still want to mingle and um, what's available for me to do? A lot of people love Cape Town because they want to be close to the beach. So you know, if the beach is one of your priorities, you're looking at the Eastern Cape, KZN, Durban vibes, as well as Cape Town. And if you want the hustle and bustle, you know that Joburg is probably your option. So just consider all of that, the social life, the local surroundings. Is there things to do outside of work? It, you know, it doesn't have to just be academics and hospital. What can I do to grow? Is there adventure? Is there nature? Is there nightlife? And more for me to do and grow. So yeah, those are the considerations when it comes to cities. Because that's why I didn't actually want to go into rural. I still wanted, wanted to be able to function and just not be in a, in a remote area. Okay, which is probably where we, most of us will end up when we do community service. So that's how I made that decision. So the next thing to consider is whether you want rural allowance or not. So rural allowance is a program that the government came up with to incentivize doctors to go work in the rural areas. And this incentive comes in the form of money. And we all love money, right? So it's usually between three to 5,000 Rand as far as I'm concerned for interns. And it's been working over the past couple of years, you know? So if you're someone who's on the budget, someone who knows that you have a lot of responsibilities, this is definitely something that you should consider. And some of the hospitals that offer it that I know of, KZN, there's uh, Church of Scotland. There's Jo Morleng or Morlong in Northwest, and then there's Mafumamadi in Kwakwa in the Free State. So there's, quite, there's a few hospitals, unfortunately, for interns, because there's only a certain number of hospitals that have been accredited to offer medical internship training. So yeah, think about that, and you know, if you want a bit of an extra buck, that's a nice incentive and a place to go work in, in the rural and be of service that side. So what you need to do is research, 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 and more research. There's so much to consider, there's so much to know about. I think um, whatever hospital that you're thinking about, you need to find out more about that hospital. What's the hospital's reputation? How's the working environment in the different departments? How's the training and the different rotations? How's the supervision? All those things are very important to know about before you go in there, just to prepare, prepare yourself mentally and also to decide, do I still want to go there or not, given the information that I'm receiving? And just also keeping in mind that whatever information you find out from people, 
might not be what you find when you get there. Docs has changed system, change, change uh, management changes as well. Um, so yeah, you, may, you need to do that research about your hospital. And one very useful resource is the Medical Internship Essay group on Facebook. If you're not already in the group, definitely, definitely join that group. It's been running for more than five years and it's been helping interns every single year. If you have any question regarding any hospital application issues, you just post on that group and there'll always be, almost always, someone who's ready to help you or to say, listen, send me a DM, I was at that hospital, hey, I'm an intern here, message me, hey, I did comp serve there, dun, 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 this is what's up. So definitely use that group. Um, I know it's for medical interns, but community service doctors also use it for the same purposes. There are a lot of medical offices as well. So it's just basically a support network for South African doctors regarding applications placements and different hospitals um, I'm assuming but I'm not sure that there is something similar for the other healthcare professions um, yeah so that a platform like that is definitely useful and something that you should use as a tool to do your research as well and also another thing that I did I just typed in the name of my hospital in the search button in that Facebook group and a lot of things from previous years and previous comments came up so that's also something to do and find out about. And then also just don't be afraid to send someone a DM and be like, hey, I'm a final year medical student. I want to find out about this place. How was your experience? And no one will be aggressive or say no. I don't think they should. But yeah, so research is very important. Find out everything you need to know about that hospital. Let's talk about the next one. Accommodation. Yo, this has been a very personal experience for me this year so i think it's important to consider accommodation for me i didn't want to get in my own place i wanted to stay at dq so dq stands for doctor's quarters and a lot of hospital offer doctor hospitals offer doctor's quarters which is where you can live and stay for the duration of your internship and, <clears throat> and the rent there is quite reasonable and that's the one thing why i wanted it it's quite reasonable but you're with that reasonable rent comes subpar maintenance in a lot of places and just <sighs> unsavvy and sometimes unsanitary places, you know. But um, I've seen some very nice DQs. There's some hospitals that are very proper. And I mean, places like New Somerset, you get to stay literally in CBD at Sea Point in Cape Town. For a very reasonable amount of rent, which is something to consider. So if you don't want to stay in DQ, which is absolutely fine, and you can afford to stay at your own place, then definitely do your research on that as well. Find out what accommodation is costing around that area. Um, are they living communes for doctors? So I know a lot of people should like to share spaces and there are houses like that in different areas. And some places are really, really expensive. I know my friend, the hospital that she was placed at this year was in an area that was quite expensive. So she had to live in a, an area a bit further apart. So then she was forced to actually buy a car when she wasn't planning to. So that's also something to consider with your hospital, with the accommodation and all the expenses that you're going to incur in that period of time of moving to this new life of being a working adult right okay hope that helps you okay let's talk about overtime hours so this is something that has been spoken about over the years i know when i was still in medical school there were final year students who were talking who actually did a campaign for safe working hours for doctors guys to be quite honest my own personal opinion is that Doing 24 hour calls is absolutely ridiculous, it's inhumane, it's not fair for patients because how are you fully functioning on your feet that whole time and how are you giving your best and your all to a patient and giving them the best quality of care that you can? It's impossible, we're human. So at my hospital we're currently doing 88 hours of overtime. There are people who report that they're doing 80 hours, some it's 96 and some it's 108 and some more. You know, so that means that affects the number of calls you're doing per month. So with my 88 hours, I'm doing five calls a month, which is not bad. So we usually do it as three weekdays and two week, two weekends. Yeah, two weekends. So three weekdays and two weekends, which makes your 88 hours. But now if you're in a hospital that has more working hours, more overtime hours, that means you're doing more calls in that month. You know which can be quite tiresome that's so that's something to consider 
but you know there are hospitals who are quite reasonable and have more interns and less hours so do your research when it comes to your hospital about the overtime hours that they have because the amount of money we paid for overtime is estimated between the fact that you're supposed to do between 80 and 100 and something overtime hours so it's not a fixed thing so you might be doing more hours than me but we're getting the same amount of overtime payment so think about that so while we're talking about money and things if you are an intern moving to Gauteng here's something you need to know you might not be paid on time exhibit a so this is quite an inconvenience, right? I know how dang a lot of interns decide I've had this problem. Some people in the free state have also reported the same problem. <sighs> Guys, there are many problems with the system and the money one is actually quite inconvenient. That's why I'm suggesting that if you can at all, um, try to budget and save a little bit of money for that January period because you, you're moving from December, the graduation period, to working a full month in January with no salary at all. You're still on your student budget and you're supposed to live, move to this new province, city, start a new life, have your own things, buy food, have a life outside of work and you know that's a lot of money. And then if you're still not being paid on that 1st of Feb, can be a lot tough you know so you know you can also stop you paying your family in advance if you definitely know that you're coming to Joburg or if you're placed here that you might not be paid on time and you might need a bit of financial support for that very short period of time example is that okay I got paid late um, mid-feb and then now for April and May I still haven't received my overtime was the my, one of the many problems with our system but i went to hr today and they said i should receive it within two weeks within two weeks so i am crossing my fingers we'll see but yeah i mean you get your money at the end of the day i think that's guaranteed but it's just the convenience of time and knowing that i've been doing so many calls and i still haven't been paid for the past two months for doing all those calls and i need my money when i'm supposed to get it so government please once again do better I speak a lot about this in my previous video. I will link it right up here. And if you haven't seen it already, check it out. I'm talking about my experience as an intern after two months of working in Gauteng. And then to my very last point, one that I find very important, crucial, should have probably be the first thing that I mentioned, but it's also safe to put it at the end so that you consider this and it can be your take home message. You need a support system go to a place where you won't be a loner where you won't be lonesome you know i'm in joburg now and so much closer to home which is case and it's a four hour drive um you need family you need friends you need people that you know care about you that you'll be able to speak to the job that we do is noble and all it's very challenging there are a lot of issues there's a lot of workplace drama there's a lot of bullying there's a lot of stuff to unpack every single day and you need a support system near you otherwise you will not be okay and if you can see a psychologist when you move to that new city then do that make your appointment and you know even if it's once in two months once in three months make sure that you have that base or that person to rant to i know i rant a lot there's a lot of things that i've been facing especially in internal medicine sure for the, the past few months have been really tough we all know even in varsity internal medicine was that tough kid and in internship it's still the same thing and i need that support system i need to be able to call someone to see someone and speak about all these things to them so yeah make sure that you have that support system make sure you have people that care about you around you and i think that should definitely make your life a little bit easier during internship all right so that is all that i had to share um, in this video regarding nine things that you should consider when applying for internship or community service i needed this pep talk i needed these points laid out to me when i was applying last year i didn't have that and i hope that re that that and i hope that this resource is going to help you make the right decision this time next year when you're doing your internship or community service i want you to look back and say you know what i did my research and i think i'm in a comfortable place yes you can't control what happens right there and then but if you're in a space that 
you actually wanted. I think that's something to be very happy about. So all the best with this mayhem of the application process. I really, really hope that you get your first choice, get the place that you want, and it's a comfortable, nice, conducive working environment, and you're going to thrive and be the best healthcare professional for your patients while taking very good care of yourself. All the best, and until next time, I will see you on the other side. Leave a comment below if you have any questions. I'm excited to hear from you. Cheers. Yo! Uh, my name is Ule Tukwenama. I'm a medical doctor by profession and June Mark since my Okay. Whether you want rural allowance or not. So if you don't know already, blah, 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 which shook some people in the butts. Boop, boop. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. This clear. Uh, blah, 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 blah.